we are in section 2.4, the chain rule. The chain rule is very useful, and before introducing it, we will review some key components of the chain rule, which is composition functions, which we discussed earlier this semester. So the first example says, let f of x equal 3x minus 2 and g of x equal the square root of 4x plus 5, then find f of g of 3. And so what this means is we need to first find g of 3. And so g of 3, since this is our g function, I'll write down g of 3 is equal to the square root of 4 times 3 plus 5. And this is going to simplify to g of 3 equaling the square root of 4 times 3 is 12 plus 5 is 17, so the square root of 17. And so this is an equal f of g of 3, we just found, is the square root of 17. And so we need to substitute in the square root of 17 into our f function, which is going to be 3 times the square root of 17 minus 2. And from here, we cannot simplify this, and this would be our final answer. So again, with composition functions or composite functions, we're going to work from the inside out. So part B right below this now wants us to find g of f of 3. And so we're going to start with f of 3. And our f function is up above. It's going to be 3 times 3 minus 2. And so f of 3 is going to equal 9 minus 2. So f of 3 is equal to 7. And so I'm going to go ahead and substitute that in for f of 3 here. And so we have g of f of 3, or 7. And so now what we're going to do is substitute this 7 into our g function up above, which is going to be the square root of 4 times x, which is 7, plus 5. And so this works out to being the square root of 4 times 7 is 28, plus 5 is 33. And so this would be our final answer. We have another example right next to this one that says let f of x equal 2x squared plus 1 and g of x equal 3x minus 4. Then find f of g of x. So this time I don't have a numerical value there. It's still left g of x. And so my outside function is f, but my inside function is g, which is going to be 3x minus 4. And so since g of x is equal to 3x minus 4, I just replace that. And now we're going to substitute this in for f. And so we're going to have 2 times, instead of x, we're going to put 3x minus 4 squared plus 1. We don't need to simplify this. We can leave this as it is. And that would be our final answer. Part b is going to be g of f of x. And so this time our inside function here is f of x. And f of x up above is going to be 2x squared plus 1. So we have g of 2x squared plus 1, which we're going to substitute in now to our g function. So we're going to have 3 times x, and instead of x, we're going to put 2x squared plus 1 minus 4. Um, I can simplify a little bit on this. I can distribute that 3, and I have 6x squared plus 3 minus 4. Combining my like terms, we get 6x squared minus 1, and that would be my final answer. For the next example, we're going to go backwards on what we had. So this example says write h of x, which is 2x minus 3 squared, as a composition of two functions, f and g, so that h of x is equal to f of g of x. So our inside function is g of x. And so our inside function here would be this 2x minus 3 that's in parentheses. So g of x equals 2x minus 3. And that means the outside function, or f, is going to be what's left over, which we have a little squared there. And so our outside function is going to be f of x. So we're going to have x to the second power. Again, you can check this by substituting g into f to see if you get the h of x value that we had. 
that we were given. So the same thing for the example right next to this. It says h of x equals 3 times the square root of 4x minus 5. Write this as a composition of two functions, f and g, so that h of x is equal to f of g of x. So this time our inside function is g of x, and our inside function up above would be inside this square root. So the inside function is usually going to be inside parentheses, and so our inside function is going to be 4x minus 5. And our outside function is going to be what is left over, which is going to be f of x equals, and we have a 3 and a radical, and we'll put x there. The chain rule says to take the derivative of the outside function while leaving the inside function the same. Then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So the chain rule is our next powerful tool that we have that goes along with the power rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, and now the chain rule. And so this says if f and g are differentiable, then the composite function f of g of x, or written with parentheses f of g of x, is differentiable, and the derivative of f of g of x is equal to the derivative of the outside, keeping the inside the same, times the derivative of the inside. So this is definitely a formula that you need to know for exams and quizzes. So we're going to practice with the example right below, which says find dy dx if y equals 2 times 3x squared minus 5x to the fourth power. And so the way that this is going to work is dy dx equals that 2 can stay right there as it is. And we're going to multiply times the derivative of the outside function. And so the outside function is going to be the part that's not inside the parentheses. So the inside function would be this 3x squared minus 5x to the fourth. The outside would be this fourth power. And so I'm going to multiply by 4, keeping the inside the same, and then subtracting 1 from that exponent using that power rule, times, because then you need to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which we underlined up above in the original problem, which is going to be times 6x minus 5. So simplifying this just a little bit, we get 8 times 6x minus 5 times 3x squared minus 5x to the third power. So that would be our derivative function. So let's try the example right next to this one. This one wants dy dx of, and we have y equals the square root of 3x squared minus 4x. So our inside function is the part that's inside that radical. And I'm also going to rewrite this as 3x squared minus 4x raised to the 1 half power. That way it makes it easier for me to take the derivative of. The outside part would be that 1 half power, and the inside is going to be the 3x squared minus 4x. So again, the chain rule, since we have an inside and outside function, is going to involve taking the derivative of the outside, keeping that inside function the same. So the 1 half comes out in front, inside stays the same. Subtracting 1 from the exponent would be time to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is going to be 6x minus 4. So rewriting this a little bit nicer, the 6x minus 4 would stay in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we have a 2. And then it's going to become 3x squared minus 4x in the denominator. And it is a, to the 1 half power, or the square root, as 3x squared minus 4x. This again would be our derivative function. The example right below says to find the derivative f prime of x if f of x equals negative 2 over 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 to the third. So first of all, there's a couple different methods you can use for this. First one would be to use the quotient rule, which we learned about last section, or we can use the chain rule by rewriting this as negative 2 times 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 to the negative third power. 
And so I'm going to practice my chain rule and take the derivative of this. So I'm going to have negative 2 stays there. Taking the derivative of the outside, keeping the inside the same. The inside is the part inside the parentheses. The outside is this exponent. And so we're going to have times negative 3. And that inside stays the same. So we would have 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 raised to subtracting 1 from my exponent. It's going to become now negative 4 times the derivative of the inside, which is going to be 6x minus 4. Again, remember the derivative of 5 is just 0. From here, we can simplify this. So simplifying from here, we have negative 2 times negative 3, or 6, times 6x minus 4, all over, and I'm going to put the denominator of 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 to the positive fourth power, since that can move to the denominator. For this, this would be a final answer. You could also factor out a 2 from that factor of 6x minus 4. And if you were to do that, you would arrive at 12 times 3x minus 2 all over 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 raised to the fourth power. So we have another example right below. And for this example, I'm going to go ahead and circle this one. And we'll look at this one together in class. The example right below that one says the cost of producing x units of a particular commodity is c of x equals one-third x squared plus 4x plus 53 dollars and the production level t hours into the particular production run is x of t equals 0.2 t squared plus 0.03 t units at what rate so that means we're talking a derivative. So at what rate is cost changing with respect to time? And so what this means when it's written this way is it's cost changing with respect to time. It means we need to find dc dt, so with respect to time. And so for this, we have a little bit of an issue because if you notice, my variable for cost is not written with a t. And so what we can do is we can rewrite this. So our cost function, c of x, if I need to rewrite this in terms of t, I'm going to have c of x of t. And this is going to become 1 third. And then instead of x, I'm going to put 0.2t squared plus 0.03t raised to second plus 4 times 0.2t squared plus 0.03t plus 53. And so now taking the derivative of this with respect to t, I have 1 third. And then our inside function here, I'll underline, is that 0.2t squared plus 0.03t. And our outside on this one would be to the second power. So we have 2 times, keeping the inside the same, and subtracting 1 from the exponent would just be to the first. So times the derivative of the inside, which is going to be 0.4t plus 0.03. For the next one, we can go ahead and just distribute this 4, or you can use the chain rule again. If you were to distribute the 4, you can go ahead and use the power rule. I'll say we didn't realize that, and we'll just keep going with the chain rule. So plus 4, this is all raised to the first. So taking the derivative of this, we're going to have times 1, and it's going to be 0.2t squared plus 0.03t raised to the subtracting one from that, 0 power, times the derivative of the inside, which we know is 0.4t 
plus 0 0.03. And then the derivative of 53 would just be 0. Remember, anything to the 0 power is 1. So simplifying this, we have 2 thirds times 0.2t squared plus 0.03t times 0.4t plus 0.03 plus, and then for the next one we're going to have 4 times 0.4t plus 0.03. And for this, we need to evaluate this when t is equal to 4, since that was given. So we need to evaluate this when t is equal to 4. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute in 4 for t. And when doing that, this is going to work out to being 10.1277. And so we know that after four hours, so after four hours, cost will, and I'm going to put down increase since this is positive, increase at a rate of, I'll round it two decimal places since we're dealing with money. So 10.13 in its dollars, since we were using dollars up above, and we'll say per hour. Since that was the units we were using were dollars and hours. The next example says Liz manages an appliance manufacturing firm. She determines that when blenders are priced at P dollars a piece, the number sold each month will be D of P equals 8,000 divided by P. Furthermore, she estimates that T months from now, blenders will be selling at a price of P of T equals 0 0.06 T to the 3 halves plus 22.5 dollars a piece. At what rate should Liz expect the monthly demand D of P to be changing with respect to time 25 months from now? Will the demand be increasing or decreasing at that time? So this does want the monthly demand DAP to be changing with respect to time. So again, our function we have is not in terms of time, but we can rewrite this. And so this would be the same thing as 8,000 times P to the negative 1. And we know that P of T P is going to be 0 0.06 t to the 3 over 2 plus 22.5. And we'll say this is raised to the negative first since we rewrote this. And again, we can use our chain rule to solve this. And so we need to find the derivative. So we'll say d dt. And so using our chain rule, we're going to have 8,000 times in our inside function here, I'll underline. And so taking the derivative of the outside function, which is to the negative first, we have times negative one times, keeping the inside function the same. And this is gonna be raised, subtracting one to that, it would be negative two times the derivative of the inside which is going to be 0 0.06 times 3 over 2. t to the subtracting 1 would be 1 half, plus the derivative of 22.5 is just 0. And so you can simplify this, but we need to evaluate this when t is equal to 25. So substituting in 25, remember the square root of 25 is 5. And when we do this, we arrive at negative 4. And so what that means is that 25 months from now, the demand for these blenders, so for blenders, 
will be decreasing since it's negative. So decreasing by four units. And this time that we're looking at was monthly. So this is going to be per month.